As you can see on the graph, the lithium carbonate price continues to go up, and with this, the cost of EV batteries. This will affect the companies such as Tesla, Xpeng, BMW, and Mercedes. But when it comes to NIO specifically, this could actually be the opposite. This could actually be an advantage to NIO as a company. Why is that so? Well, as you know, NIO has the opportunity to sell the car without the battery to the customers. And they call this service battery as a service. So what you do is you go into the NIO store, you pick your car that would cost you 60,000 euros. But now you have the option to buy it at 45,000 euros without the battery. And instead you pay a monthly fee of let's say 100 or 200 euros or US dollar per month to use or utilize or lease that battery for four or five years. So now not only you pay like $15,000 less for the car, instead of 60,000 you pay now 45,000 give or take, but then you know this also drives volume because some of the people would, couldn't afford to buy that car at 60,000 euros, but they can at 45,000. You know helps the customer to be able to afford and buy that car that they wanted but this also helps you to sell more cars at the end of the day, right? So I think there's a lot of advantages there. In addition to, as we mentioned, that the customer doesn't get the headache of the resale value, the, you know, any warranty issues and so on and so forth. So what, what will this mean for NIO? Well, if you look at their battery swap infrastructure, you can see that currently they are at around 30 swaps per station. And remember that if you go back, you know, two and a half years ago, three years ago, during like 2022, when the lithium carbonate price really spiked again, when I zoom out now, you can see that the lithium carbonate price was at 600,000, 500,000 or so. Whereas in the last year, it bottomed at around 60,000 and now going up again to 120,000. So despite the doubling over the past six months, it's still nowhere near that level of, you know, 500, 400, 600,000 that we had in 2022 and 2023. And why is that important? Well, in this time frame, the management went out that say, they said that at 60 swaps per station a day, they go, they essentially achieve break even for the swap infrastructure. In my opinion, that was based on the number, uh, you know, the cost of the battery back then in 2022 and 2023. Currently, it's a different, complete different picture. The batteries cost less. And also remember that the NEO swap infrastructure is much larger. So probably the scalability in the system is helping them to reduce that 60 number, right? So if the break, break even was 60 three and a half years ago, two and a half years ago, probably it's less now. Now it's anyone's guess to know how much that is, but I would argue that it's less than 50 right now, based on the, you know, how much the lithium carbonate price has gone down since they mentioned that. And also again, the scalability of the business. So that is good to see. Now let's look at the numbers again. We can see that these are, you know, my yearly delivery numbers. Green is 2023, blue is 24, gray is this year, 2025, soon to be, you know, round up. And next year is 2026. Now you can see that 160,000 and then I'll increase to 220. Then this year we are looking at around 320,000 deliveries, which is in my opinion, really, really great. They are essentially double their sales in two years. I'm very happy with that. In any other company, in any other like Western automotive company, this would be like unbelievable like sales increase. Double your sales in two years is amazing. Now, again, if you've been following my channel, you know that the management have kind of done some missteps back in last year and two years ago where they were super offensive. I mean, at one point in late December of 2024, I believe their CFO or someone really high up in the management mentioned that they would essentially sell 450,000 cars in 2025. And we are well, well sure of that. But still, you know, let's not, uh, how do I say, miss the forest because of the trees, right? So even if we are well sure of that 450,000 or whatever it was, 440,000 maybe, we are still, you know, increasing our sales by 40% year over year, which is amazing. And again, doubling it essentially in two years. Now for next year, I'm looking at 540,000 cars in this like super bullish scenario. And Remember, it is super bullish, but I would still say that some of you kind of say that I'm quite negative when it comes to the first quarter, right? Especially January and February. Now, if you turn that around again, you know that look at the January and February of the past three years. It's been like super bad deliveries, you know, compared to 2026 expectations, right? They could still turn out to be super unrealistic on the bullish side. I mean, even 25,000 would be so much better than last January. And even like 30,000 would be so much better than last February. So again, let's, you know, not run away with our expectations. And I do believe that I would like to update these numbers at 
and at least look at a more realistic scenario of like 450,000 deliveries to maybe, maybe 500,000. But I wouldn't say that it's unrealistic with 540,000 because at the end of the day, there is a somewhat realistic expectations in Q1. And then I can see them, especially with the strength of the, you know, the Onvo sales and Firefly ramping up. And then again, you know, the ES8 being such a great delivery, I think they can do very early next year, 40,000 on average, for sure. I, I definitely think that they will reach that 40,000 average, maybe by latest by April. But then maybe that 62 and 58,000 delivery in November and December next year is slightly too optimistic. End of the day, let's say 500,000, give or take, plus minus 50,000. And then looking at the more in, important facts, it's actually this graph for me. And you can see that in the green, we have the revenue. Then we have on the dashed gray line, we have cost of sales. Then we have gross profit in the white uh, dashed line. And then we have operating expenditure and net loss. And you can see that the net loss, which was essentially below this zero line, was apparently, according to my model, like, let's say Q4 of this year and Q1 of next year, that is when we reach give or take break even. But then we should start to start actually go from net loss to net profit. And why is that? Well, because the operating expenditure, the pink one you can see, it's kind of stagnating over the past, you know, uh, at least over the last year and expected to stagnate also into next year. And that will make sure that a lot of the revenue will start to turn into gross profit and then into, into net income. You can also see the delivery numbers again in terms of vehicle deliveries in yeah 2026. I believe these are realistic numbers. Q1 next year should be lower than Q4 this year, but it should not be the same drop that we traditionally see, for example, from Q4 2024, where they sold 74,000 cars and it dropped to like 42,000 cars. Much, much higher percentage decrease from Q4 of last year to Q4, Q1 of this year. But as this time around, I do believe that it will be a decrease for sure, a significant decrease of around 20,000, maybe even like uh, less than that, maybe 15 to 10,000, but it will be a significant decrease, but not to the same extent. And this is, you know, point in the picture that NEO is becoming a much more viable option on the market. And even looking at some other important factors, like for example, average sales price, right? So how much are they selling their cars for on average? And we can see here that my SP on row 38 is actually <laughs> very interesting because if in Q3 we had like 30,978 and in Q4 I'm expecting between 32 to 33,000 US dollar. Why is that? Well, we know that this car, the NIO ES8 is like selling like nothing we've seen before. And this is a super expensive car, especially in China with high margins. So this will increase in your gross margin, in my opinion, substantially. And currently they say that they have delivered 30,000 in your ES8 year to date. Obviously this car was launched like in late Q3, I believe, or early Q4. So it's a really, really interesting to see that New York can deliver this kind of volumes on this high end level of cars. One thing that I'd really like to hear your point of view on is the gross margin because I'm struggling a little bit to model this because you can see here that Q3 was 13.88% gross margin. Then there's a huge jump because the increase in delivery numbers from 87,000 cars in Q3 to 118,000 or so in Q4. And that would mean like a substantial increase uh, quarter over quarter when it comes to gross margin. Now, I'm not sure if that number is realistic as we go beyond Q4 of this year. I mean, if the deliveries are above 100,000 and even getting closer to 150,000, my model says like 20, 20%, 21% or so. I'm not sure. Like this is, you know, and this will affect, you know, how much net income they will start to, you know, how much profitable they will become as a company. And currently I'm looking at half a billion or so in uh, net income on a quarterly basis for late next year, early year after. So Q1 of 2027. But depending on this number here, like depending on gross margin, which again depends on, you know, the cost of sales, maybe they are more efficient. Maybe the real issue with my model maybe currently is actually the cost of sales. So if you look at this graph here instead, you can see that as the revenue go up, the other sales go up like slowly but surely. But then the cost of sales is kind of keeping the pace with the revenue. You might argue that the white one, which is the cost of sales, would start to taper off more aggressively. 
as we go into like late this uh, late 26 and uh, then also in 2027 that is probably one of the reasons why in some of your point of view my net income like as we go into let's say 2027 is not as like gargantuan as some of you model maybe some of you are expecting already a double of this rate like for example 1 billion in q3 of 27 one and a half billion in i don't know like q4 of 27 and that will obviously affect the valuation of the company but at the end of the day we are now looking at between a super bullish scenario and a more like new neutral bullish scenario so yeah no matter how you look at this at the end of the day this company is my opinion super undervalued and look at the comparison between neo and let's say tesla right tesla is valued currently at around 1.5 1.6 trillion us dollar and i think their gross margins is around 18 percent and this is also a very important fact like tesla is valued at 150 times the size of neo but actually after q4 of this year so the moment we have the q4 earnings i would bet that tesla's gross margin and neo's gross margin would be very close to each other Again, my expectations for Q4 gross margin for Neo is 18.5%, or let's say between 18 and 18.5%. And I'd say that Tesla's in best case scenario would be 20%. So we would be very close to Tesla in terms of gross margin. And then you would really ask yourself, why is Tesla valued so much more than Neo? And I think this is super unrealistic. I for a minute doesn't don't believe that Tesla will own the entire like self-driving auto- autonomous drive. And I actually like the Neo's uh, look on the self-driving much more because they have more sensors. They have lidars, they have uh, uh, radars, and they have uh, you know camera and vision. Uh, although you could argue that maybe the lidar component is a little bit you know too much, but especially a combination of a radar and a vision system, I think is the right way to go about it at the bare minimum. Whereas Tesla is solely relying on you know vision, and that's a uh, yeah. That's obviously something to be seen, but currently I would say that I'm really, really intrigued in looking at Neo in more detail and increasing my position, as well as even Xpeng. I mean, Xpeng, in my opinion, it might be compared to Neo more overvalued, but still quite cheap. So yeah, thanks for your time. And uh, what, what's your thought on this? Do you think that the lithium carbonate price going up and the battery price going up will give more advantage to Neo? And is the valuation still like? completely unrealistic compared to Tesla. So yeah, see you in the next one.